Hello. We are back at the scene of the crime. <laughs> Today I brought the Jeep out. I'm back in the same area that I was exactly one week ago. So the conditions are actually worse today than they were last time. I've already just coming in about 100, 200 yards in, I've already had to really womp on it. And I'm on the regular clay, clay entrance road here. So today's Friday, a week ago Friday, I was out here in the Lexus, made a video. You saw me getting stuck everywhere. Since then, I've had 50 degree temps a few days. Uh, about three or four days ago, we got two inches of snow up here on top. And yeah, it's, listen. It's like ice. So, oh. that's how thick the top ice layer is. Then it goes to that kind of snow. And then it goes to pure ice, then it goes to clay mud. So this should be interesting. But I thought I'd bring the, bring the Jeep out. So the main difference is here. This has lockers if I need to lock up all four tires, but it's got 37 inch tires and they're wider. Now the width is a negative. I've already felt the width as a problem as I was coming in here. More rolling resistance when it comes to that. So I'm gonna head in. I'm back in at the first two locations that I got stuck. Here's one, well, where the Jeep is kind of buried right now. That's where I first got stuck and the second one is here. You can see the snow, how much, couple, three, two, three, four inches has come in uh, since I was here last. The snow is way worse. I filmed just getting in into here, the short little shot there, and I was, I had the Jeep floored in uh, second gear low. I'm gonna show you what I was talking about. You could pro you might be able to see as I'm coming into this little section, how deep the ruts are. Those ruts were made by the Lexus. It, there was none there. I came in and came back out just in the Lexus and no one else has been back in here. You can see how deep they are. Independent front suspension. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like with a solid axle and 37s. You see the diff is in, in the snow. These ruts were made by the Lexus. I'm literally like an inch and a half away from the whole axle being a snow dam pushing. What I'm trying to do here is to show people that may not know the differences. Everyone touts solid axles as being, they're so strong, right? and you can lift them real easy and there's a lot, a lot of pluses. But when it comes to snow, that solid axle 
it sits at the center line of the of the wheel of the tires, right? So it gets down into the snow before uh, lifted independent front suspension does. And these bigger, wider tires, the bigger tires are a benefit. The wider tires in here are not. They're having to plow so much more snow. That's why I've got the tall, skinny tires on the Lexus. So, I don't know, I might be stuck right there. I came to a stop and I'm like, oh, I better film this part. So yeah, there's the Jeep on its 37s and twin locked, buried in the same spot as the Lexus. Take a look at that front axle now, see where it's at. Buried. So, I'm doing this for my own purposes too. You know, I talk about thinking in the back of my head, oh, maybe the Jeep is just gonna just kill it out here, right? Spinning donuts, laughing for days. I'm facing downhill and it just buried. <clears throat> now the, the axle is trying to push against all that snow and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Stuck number one. I know what you guys are saying. Where's your chains? You're right, chains would be good here. The only problem is I like to really get after it. And you throw a chain and you could destroy your vehicle. So, uh, totally came prepared. My winch controller, which is wireless, is dead, but I've got multiple battery packs. So, charging it up right now, I was able to release the clutch. Okay, so you guys may have been wondering last time what I used. So this is a, a, a soft shackle, right? Instead of hard shackles. And then this, that's a tree saver. You wrap it around the tree, you know, and then you hook to that. That way it 
protects the tree. You put the rope around there, one, you could damage your rope, but you're gonna gut through the bark and everything. But I'm gonna, it's like an S turn here. I think I'm gonna hook to that tree over there and try and get back into this. But you saw what it took me just to get out of there. I think I'm gonna have to make a, I think I have to make two trips. I'm gonna walk up there with the, the tree saver and the soft shackle right now. I'm in the exact same spot. I got stuck right here where I'm at. Then I went, once I got out of here, after I lowered my tire pressures, I'm at like 18. I could obviously go way lower, but I just, I try different levels, but you can see I turned around, pulled in between those two trees and backed into where I'm at, which is exactly what I do with the Lexus. And it buried right there, just like the Lexus did. So, so far they're both even. They're both burying themselves in the same spot. Now, granted this snow, I would say is worse than it was last weekend, but those diffs, the axles keep burying themselves, even though I have a lot bigger tires on there. So I'm gonna hook up to this tree here. I've got both my hands full right now, but I'm gonna hook up to this tree. So because I'm pulling uphill, the Jeep is a lot lower than I am here. So what I'm doing is I'm not hooking around the base. I go up a little bit around the tree. It kind of gives the winch line an angle. It's not just dragging you into the snow. It's kind of helping you pull up. So you wrap it around. It's nice and wide. And then here's the soft shackle setup. So when I come up here with the winch line, I'll open this up like that. Winch line goes in here, put the ball back on. And as you pull, this gets tighter. And if anything was to break, um, you know, you don't have those big heavy metal D shackles on there. I do have a, an aluminum like thimble on the front of the winch line. I may, I may adjust that now too. I just never winched a lot. So the idea is to have no metal, no, whether it's ferrous or non-ferrous, you know, whether it's steel or aluminum in your winch pole. That way, if something was to break and snap, whichever way it goes flying, it's synthetic rope at that point. This is what I'm talking about. I'm getting close to the warning part of the winch. You start to see that red. You don't want to go any more than that. See, these battery packs aren't just for phones or cameras. They're for wireless winch controllers too. All right, let's see what this does for us. Holding the camera and Steering and winching is not the easiest thing. Look, I'm steering with my knee. This hand here, this hand on the camera, this hand on the knee. Now I'm barely touching the gas. As soon as I feel like the winch is really loading up, I'll just touch the gas a little bit. You can kind of hear that. If you watched last week's video, can you tell how much faster this winch is than the other one? <laughs>
it's way way faster I'm gonna disconnect the winch, try and drive up there. All right, so I got the winch line all back in. I got my tree saver and stuff back there. Got my camera in my hand. I'm still charging the, the controller because I don't know if I'm done with it yet or not. So I still got uphill. We're gonna try and get rolling with an idle and then floor it. These are my tracks from last week. All right. Well, since I did a stupid thing and went and got stuck in the same two spots, I might try and go for that other spot again where I got stuck really bad. and maybe set up to cook because it's already noon. Well, I've arrived. I know what you guys are saying. Don't be stupid. There it is right there. Let me get over there. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> I'm going for it. One ha One handed. There's snow in here. I was on it. Hard. All right, let's go. Let's go see what what we did here. Man, that I was floored. Look at that snow. <laughs> um, I guess the, I guess I kind of thought that maybe over here wasn't going to be so deep. So, really, my goal for this this uh, little excursion today was this like redemption kind of in, in one or two ways. One, can I redeem myself by just, you know, beast, beast moding around in the Jeep? Or can I re redeem uh, the GX470's pride and say, hey, look, the Jeep is getting buried too, you know? 
just because you don't have 37 inch tires and lockers you just got some really old uh traction control system yeah so i think the the redemption is for the gx today not saying that the the jeep can just beast its way through this because i just got stuck again Well, I was going in deeper and deeper and then uh, trying some different filming techniques and then the Jeep decided to throw a transmission light <laughs> I gotta get out of here I gotta get back to the road so in my Toyotas they don't they don't do that but also because they're older I've got scan gauges and stuff for them I don't have it for this because this thing only has like 16,000 miles on it. You're like, yeah, but you were flo redlining it with 37s. <laughs> I know, it's supposed to be able to do that though. So I was manually shifting it this whole time. So I could, when I'm really trying to rev it up and you see it spinning, you know, barely moving, that second gear low at about uh, 6,000 RPM, maybe 5,500 and then cruising along this road here. I'm, uh, I was doing like third and fourth gear. Low, low range, four wheel drive. Still got the lockers on. And I'm gonna crash with this camera. Maybe it, uh, maybe it got hot, but where it popped on, I was on a flat spot and I wasn't, um, I was actually holding a camera out the window filming. So today, I'm going to reward myself with Hebrew National Hot Dogs, Cheese, and Wiener Schnitzel Chili Sauce. I'm making chili cheese dogs. Somebody got me this like a year or two ago, wiener schnitzel chili sauce with meat. And I don't have a wiener schnitzel out here, so I thought this would be a good time to try it out.
Look at that, Wiener Schnitzel Chili Cheese Dogs. Meaty style. Mm. <laughs> I'm going full healthy today. It's so bright out here I can't I can't even see my viewfinder on my other camera so I'm going to have to use this one but I just finished up It's a little chilly a little chilly on the ground so I'm definitely going to feel that one later I can already tell <clears throat> I think 2 years ago maybe somebody gave me that can of Wiener Schnitzel chili stuff you know it's the it's the stuff that comes with i guess yeah it's two years old i think it expired last year according to the can but hebrew national hot dogs i haven't had a hot dog in a long time they were pretty good the buns we use those buns they're like artisan buns i don't know we use them for uh beef dips beef dips all the time so I wanted regular hot dogs, I mean hot dog buns, because I wanted it to be like kind of authentic because I don't have a wiener schnitzel out here, but it it reminded me of what I felt like eating there. <laughs> I'm literally a hundred meters off the road and I almost got stuck right here. It's it's some nasty snow. Oh, and I keep wrench in my back because I'm sliding out. It's a uh, it's very icy. You guys are like get chains <laughs> So good thing one I mean the only bad thing from today is that I got a a Transmission light that popped on who knows what the heck that is never had any issues with the Jeep. So Other than um, an ARB air locker going out at 7,000 miles Which really pissed me off because you got to literally tear everything apart to get to that little o-ring but i haven't had any issues with this i may have just overheated it because i was i was on it pretty good like locked into second gear low who knows this thing's these are super loud because they've got all these cooling fans up there there's you know electric fans all over the place and especially in the summer man the engines everything gets so loud so i'd be surprised with it being in the snow and all those cooling fans that i would have overheated it but who who knows who knows other than that though i think things worked out pretty good i i got to you man i love this winch you know i don't i'm gonna say i spent 850 on the worn evo winch Okay, that's what's on the 80 series. That's what's on the Lexus. This one here is a, uh, I always forget what it is because I bought it like seven years ago. This is called, Xeon 10S Platinum. So it's like top of the line for these types of winches. Uh, this one, I think, I think at the time back then it was about 1800. I think they're 2200 now. But man, oh man, you want to know the difference? Uh, this stuff, uh, uh, the curiosity always gets me with this. This one here, made in America. Made, I think Warren is in Oregon. There's somewhere in the Pacific Northwest. Made in America. This one. The and it has the same footprint, everything, the worn Evo BR winch, whatever the other one is, made overseas. It's made overseas, but because it's a worn, I'm pretty sure they have, they have the quality control is done here in the United States. So you got, it's not just that it's made overseas. That's not root. That's not the indicator of it. It's, it's cheaper for a reason, not only because it's not US labor, but it's, it's not, it's like half as fast. This winch here, oh my gosh, it just, it pulled the Jeep out so fast. It's so good. I'm, I might switch, switch this one on to the 80 series. Look, this one, this Jeep doesn't need the winch that much. But the, the 80 might, it doesn't have any lockers or anything. So they have the same footprint, which is really good, right? The bolts, 
it's the same footprint, all, everything. They're almost the same shape, but my goodness, I forgot how good this winch is versus those other ones. Those, the, the, the price is just like what? A little bit more than the Harbor Freight winches and you get a, the worn name. But man, that winch is slow. That's the first time I used an Evo and they're, they're look, if that's all you used and it's gotten you out, great. But I'm telling you, it is slow. But all it takes is for it to get you out one time and it pays for itself. Look, I, I, was, I was way back there, man. I was way back there. <laughs> and I would have had to walk till I got a signal and then hopefully I could get somebody to come help me because there ain't nobody out here. I'm already, I'm already feeling the, the chili. <laughs> I'm already feeling the chili, dang it. All right, well, I'm all aired up, ready to go back, hit the road. Here's that uh, sign from last week. Still says road closed. It's not closed. They just haven't come back out to get that. It's a lot warmer down here, man. I was up over those mountains back there it's hard to see them but you go up and it goes higher and higher but down here it's man it feels like almost 55 degrees or something so that was really fun um i learned a lot i learned that i love this winch way better than the other ones i learned that just because this thing's got huge tires and everything it's when it comes to certain elements they're they're like the equalizer right like snow and sand is those two right there they're really they're really kind of the same of of what they do to your vehicle and how hard it's to get through it but jeep did pretty good i did have to winch i i brought the traction boards from the lexus and its shovel i uh, used the shovel a little bit but the only really things i did was let down air and use the winch now if you remember when I said I was gonna I jumped into the area and got stuck where I did really bad the last time I was able to actually just back right out of there so I backed right out of that turned around that's when I went in deeper and I got this check engine light so all right well I hope you guys enjoyed it I sure did that was a lot of fun we'll see you all next weekend